Okay, today I want to look at sliders. So we're going to look at some, we're going to start looking at graphical widgets that we can use to control different elements of our instrument. So I'm just creating a very basic new instrument. I'm going to just drag, if I can grab the corner of this. There we go. And here we go. Right. So the cabbage section of the CSD is where we define all aspects of our instrument's appearance and we declare different widgets, for example sliders, combo boxes, buttons, table viewers, etc. etc. Okay. By default, cabbage, when you create a new instrument, creates one type of widget for us already, which is the keyboard, which is this widget here. And it also sets up the main window, which is described in this line here. Everything that follows form determines how the main window is going to look. Uh, for example, what size it's going to be. It's going to be 400 pixels by 300 pixels. It's going to have a caption untitled. And we can see that caption is here. So this code relates to what's going to appear here in this window. So for example, if I change it to uh, titled, now that's going to be titled, okay? Likewise, if I change the size, for example, then we see it's going to change the size. So if I just change the left, so the width to 500, now we get it, it's much bigger, okay? So I want to look at sliders today. Um, so I'm going to create an R slider. Oh, there's two ways that you can create widgets with cabbage. You can either go to edit mode and I'm just going to close that. Right click in edit mode and I can put in an R slider for example. Okay. When I do that it creates a slider for us and it also gives you this properties window. So in the properties you can change different aspects of the slider. You can also do it in the text. Now whether you do it in the text or whether you do it in the property window is entirely up to you. Um, personally I prefer to do things in text. I think it's quicker, but um, most some of you might prefer to do it over here. Okay. So you'll notice as soon as I click on this widget, it highlights the widget text here. Okay. And then if I change, say for example, if I move the widget around we can see that this changes. Okay, So it's going to automatically update with the size and position of the widget. right? So to explore some of the actual attributes of the widget, you've got things like, for example, text, which is use useful. So we could say gain. If I hit escape, it's going to add that to it. Okay, So it's going to put in a text. Obviously, I could change it here as well. I can say no gain whatever and then no gain appears here okay so whether you want to work from from the graphical properties window or the text window it makes no difference it's still going to be the same identifiers that you need to use speaking of identifiers what are identifiers identifiers are these guys like bounds channel range text and they start with an opening bracket and they close with a closing bracket and in between we defined we define different characteristics of a particular aspect of the widget. For example, range controls the range of the widget. So it goes from minimum to maximum and then has initial value. So at the moment that initial value is 0.5. I can change, or sorry, it was zero. I can change it to 0.5. And now we can see that the slider, its initial value is 0.5. This value here is going to control the slew of the slider. So, for example, if we change it to 0.5, now the slider is going to behave kind of in a logarithmic fashion, non-linearly. If it's a 1, it's just going to move linearly from, it's going to have equal steps all the way up. Uh, this sets the increments, the size of each step. So, for example, if I change this to 0.1, now our slider is going to jump 0.1 every time we move it. Okay. So, if you want a high-resolution slider, can change this to 0 0.00 for example. Now it's going to move quite slowly between each value. Okay. 
So some of the other goodies about sliders, let's see if we go to edit mode, we can click here. For example, we can change the color of the slider. We can change it to red, for example. Uh, we can change the tracker color, and that's the tracker of the outside of the outside this this part here, basically. So if we want to change that color, we can change the tracker color over here. So I can just maybe make it white, for example. Okay. We can change the text color. So maybe make that something terrible like green. Okay, and that's going to update text color. So you can control all aspects of the slider from here. Um, you can also set if whether it's going to be visible or not. Um, alpha, there's rotate, there's lots of different things that you can do. If you if you want to find out more about each slider, if you go to the cabbage help file and you click on sliders, it'll describe each of the identifiers here. So channel, range, main, max, text, color, text color, so on and so forth. Okay, so how do you use these sliders in your instrument? Okay, so each slider is going to have to have a channel identifier, okay? And for the most part, every kind of interactive GUI widget has to have a channel identifier, okay? Our one is called R slider. That's just the default name. I'm going to change it to gain. And I'm going to save this instrument, okay? So now in order to access the values of this slider, I need to use a chan get. So I'm going to say, okay, gain. I'm going to use a chan get up code, and I'm going to pass it gain. Okay, and I'm going to save that. Now, well, actually, I'm just going to multiply this by k gain so we can actually use the output again. Uh, that should be a multiplication. That's it, and that's that's an error because I should have a lowercase k and an uppercase g. Obviously, you can call this anything you want. You can call it K, my volume, K1, K2, just whatever you do call it, or whenever you declare it up here. It has to, you have to use the same name down here, or else you're going to get an error. Okay, so let's save so I can. Let's see. Uh, okay, and now if I bring this down, we don't hear anything. Okay, so obviously the gain. The gain is working here. If I turn it up, we should have something louder. Okay. So, what's going on? Right, well, channel sets a named channel that the values from this slider are going to be sent to. Chan get picks up the values on that particular channel. And that's pretty much it. So it's going to pass the values of that channel to a variable called kgain, in this case. And then we can use kgain anywhere we want. So the values of kgain are going to vary between 0 and 1, OK, because this is the range. So as we move slider from 0 to 1, it's going to set the value of kgain with the value of the slider. So for example, here we can see gain is 0. That means kgain is going to be 0. So when you hover over a widget in Cabbage, it'll show you the channel name. So it's kind of a quick way of looking and saying, okay, this is gain. Okay, K gain has been accessed here with Chan get. Okay, right. Um, so there's different types of sliders as well. Uh, if I go back into edit mode, right click, uh, there's V slider, which is a vertical slider, and there's H sliders for horizontal sliders. They pretty much all work the same way. They have similar attributes, similar identifiers that can be used to control how they look um, and how they appear on screen. But they'll always have to use, if you want to use the values of the sliders anywhere, you also have to set up a unique channel for them. So if, for example, I call them all gain, so I'm going to use the same channel for each of them, and I save it, you'll see some weird things happening when I move one. Oh look, the rest of them move as well that's because they all have the same channel. So each one should have a unique channel name, likewise if I move that one. So if I just quickly change these so they're unique. Now I can move one slider, and I have independent control of all the rest of the sliders. It's kind of a, sometimes it's a neat trick because you can control one slider with another slider. 
this can be kind of sometimes this can be useful uh, or you can use a button to control the value of the slider so when the button's on the slider goes up to full when the button's off the slider goes back to zero okay. anyway that's sliders